Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Today we will be talking about education and development mm. on a human scale. Uh, thank you for accepting this invitation. Uh, today we have more than 80 participants registered from universities and colleges like uh, in the US and also in Puerto Rico and those colleges are Ana Jiménez University, Universidad Ventista Las Antillas in Puerto Rico, Atenas College in Puerto Rico, Macau Community College, EDP University, NUC University, Pontificia Universidad Católica in Puerto Rico as well. And in the US, we have uh, participants from BNCC, Borough Manhattan Community College, Hostos Community College, Queensboro Community College, and Palm Beach State uh, College. Thank you for accepting again this invitation and thank you for your time. Before we begin today's topic, we invite you to use the chat to write your questions or doubts as we, as our interest is to clarify your doubts about this topic. We ask that you keep your microphones uh, mute to avoid any interruptions as this webinar is being recorded for your reference and also to share with other students that were not being able Bella, to connect live today uh, with, with us today. The recording can be found on the same page where, the, where you register. In, in the next 24 hours, we definitely will have the recording uploaded. And also, we will be sharing the copy of the presentation in a PDF format. Okay, if you have a, any doubt, uh, don't hesitate to contact us at info.heads.org. Uh, participants who are interest, uh, interested in this webinar uh, certificate, please send us an email to info.heads.org. Uh, and please remember that in the email, uh, you have to put your full name, uh, the date and the webinar title so we can definitely know that you are requesting the certificate for this webinar. And you have seven days to request, to make this request, uh, re re request uh, excuse me, you, this request by email. And as soon as we receive all the, the emails, then we will prepare uh, the certificate and you should be receiving this certificate in the next two weeks, okay? Uh, we also remind you that if you go to heads.org, our website, uh, you can find in the home page the next event sections uh, with all the topics and, and the events that we will be offering during this semester. Uh, remember, this is a combination of webinar in English and in Spanish since we serve institutions in Latin America, Puerto Rico, and also in the U.S. We invite you to register. Uh, all events are totally free of charge. You only need to click on the topics that you're interested and then uh, register uh, to uh, receive the link to connect the day of the event. Uh, our next webinar will be in Spanish, will be in November 13. And the topic is Mercadea Tu Marca Personal. Uh, and our speaker will be Dr. Mm. Naomi Curet from Ana Jiménez University here in Puerto Rico. As you may know, as a result of the crisis ca caused by the COVID-19, mm -hmm. this pandemic, HES has been providing special support to the students, community of member institutions in Puerto Rico, US and Latin America as part of our vision and mission. As you may know, we have uh, in our website, when you go to this virtual plaza, you will see all the online services that HEADS provide uh, in the Student Placita. All of those services are totally free of charge. Please mm. feel free to uh, go there and visit and take advantage of all these services. And also, yeah. don't forget, please mute for this microphone if you can, so we cannot interrupt the recording. Thank you so much. Uh, as part of uh, our mission, we definitely would like to support in any, anything that we can, may, we can uh, be. Uh, and all these services are coordinated with you on mind uh, to help you uh, succeed in your academic goals. Remember that we are recording, 
So please keep your microphones in mute. And now we are ready to start our webinar and I am pleased to present today's uh, uh, speaker, Jose Mino Lara. Uh, he is the online program specialist of Southeast Missouri State University. But uh, uh, first, let me share with you a few uh, lines of uh, 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 bio, biography uh, data of Jose so we can learn a little bit about him. Jose has been with Southeast Missouri State University since 2018 and currently serves as an online program specialist. He loves the collaboration taking place at the university and enjoys working with students on generating solutions for their academic success. Mm -hmm. Jose earned his uh, clinical psychology degree from the Pontificia Universidad Católica del Ecuador. He's from there, by the way and his master of science degree in training and performance, uh, performance improvement from Nor Northern Michigan University. As a continuous learn learner, he welcomes uh, opportunities for growth and development in all aspects of life. And before I present, uh, I, I left the, the, the time to Jose to do the presentation, I also want to welcome Dr. Karen Rivera, our special consultant, that she's here with us, and also Jelixa Castro, our the head executive assistant, who is managing the chat and also uh, admitting you to the webinar as the host of this webinar. So thank you both for your support in the coordination of this uh, webinars, and also to Jose to accept this invitation and to be able to uh, be here with us and with our students. Right now we have uh, more than 50 students, so excellent. Jose, now please uh, take uh, the microphone and I'm gonna be mute so I don't, I don't interrupt and go ahead. Thank you again. Thank you, Yubelkis, and thanks everyone for being here today. Um, I appreciate the invitation very much and I look forward to uh, sharing a little bit of um, what I've learned and what I've prepared for you today. Um, please uh, make sure if you have questions, um, use the chat and uh, we're going to have some time at the end of the presentation um, so that we can address those questions and uh, feel free also to post your comments uh, to share with everyone. So um, I'm going to be sharing my screen uh, with the presentation. And the title of the presentation, uh, are you all seeing the first slide? OK. Um, the title of the presentation is Education and Development on a Human Scale. Um, the idea is to go from explaining the current state of our society with regard to development and education and uh, at the end of the presentation, hopefully to have um, covered a new approach that is emerging in our societies. So if we are going to make a historical approach to understanding how we have come to uh, the emergence of a new um, a new paradigm. Um, we can look at the previous paradigms and how they have developed. Uh, Alvin Toffler, a philosopher from the United States, had talked about historical events happening in waves. This is a representation of those waves. The first one took place um, before the emergence of the Christian faith, um, where in our Western society, um, the approach to life was more imminent, meaning magical, based on philosophical theories about the origin of life and also about how everything works. Um, and a very magical approach to understanding life in community with nature. 
But that wave came down and we have a transcendent emergence after the appearance of our Western religion. Um, the first Christians in the fourth century and uh, so came another big wave until um, science became or reason became the approach to understanding uh, how to uh, live in society. So we have more a mechanic or mechanic, uh, a mechanic approach to, to life. Uh, science enabled the emergence of ideas and putting them into technology and uh, using that technology to, um, uh, from, from the end of the 18th century until today, we have that huge wave of increasing capabilities of uh, improving our life in, in many ways. Um, but of course, there comes another wave. And this wave uh, is being called by some as a synergetic. Uh, this emergence of this idea of coming together in, in a different way, uh, sort of uh, uniting all of these other paradigms and uh, looking beyond and what we have forward. Um, and of course, it's called a wave because as a physical event, there's an emergence, it reaches a peak, and then inevitably, by a force of nature, it goes down or it, it just disappears and a new wave is coming. And that's just a natural expression of how us humans have been developing our systems of life. So we're talking about a declining model. And again, uh, or I would like to say that this is not a moralistic approach. So if I am saying that it's a declining model that doesn't necessarily have a connotation of negativity, uh, it's just a declining model. There are some negative aspects to it, of course, and we're gonna cover some of those. Um, and also there's an emerging approach, an emerging model that is becoming more present in our uh, societies. How can we understand this model in decline <clears throat> in a societal approach and also an individual approach? We have a supremacy of man over nature, the technological approach to everything and the resource-based economy has um, made us human beings uh, be on top of everything else. Um, a few over many others. Ultimately, that's what's, uh, what's happening nowadays where um, human beings um, are focused more in the having rather than being. And uh, lastly, in this model in decline, there's a supremacy of reason over faith. And when I write faith, I'm not referring to necessarily a religious thought or a religious faith. Faith uh, can be uh, expressed in terms of faith, faith in other people, faith in the systems in place, faith in nature. So it's not uh, necessarily related to religion. And in the per, on, the, on the personal sphere, we have an emergence or a, over presence of individualism, this competitive approach to everything uh, of uh, reaching to the top and um, just looking down and uh, which makes us be separated from others. And um, then you have several um, ailments that come with that individualism, which is uh, to being apart from society, feel, feeling lonely and other pathologies. Um, and this model is more or less expressed by um, a motivational theory. What motivates us? What has motivated us in this model? One of the things is that growth is the accumulation of wealth which is the expression of, um, can be seen in uh, how do we measure in today's indexes uh, a, a successful organization or country by how much wealth has been accumulated. Um, and this is uh, more or less in, in many ways uh, expressed in Maslow's theory of motivation. 
the vision of uh, reaching a, a lonesome top of a pyramid as a self-actualization or self-realization um, is a very lonely uh, idea. Um, it's also quite unnatural. Um, there is no natural um, structure that can be supported as a pyramid. Uh, we'll, I'll talk about that later in the presentation. But as you can see, I think uh, many people uh, are aware of how this system uh, can be very um, unfair. And it is an expression of inequity in our, in our current society and the model that we're living in. So um, this is a little bit to go into the um, conversation about development. What is development in today's terms? How, how have we come to this expression of development? And now, how can we approach education under this system? And how has education adapted to this model? It comes from somewhere else, meaning it doesn't come from the person. There's somebody else that will educate me. And it's based on the conditioning of people in order for them to be functional to the system. So if a person is educated, what we are thinking about is them uh, repeating uh, certain rules and being able to follow certain, certain rules. Uh, in many cases, it's based on memory and repetition, um, which uh, disconnects uh, the learner from the experience. Um, and ultimately, uh, becoming part of a herd. So anything that goes outside of the norm is being seen as um, unnecessary uh, and can be even annoying, so it, it has to be separated. Um, this is a, a coherent educational model uh, with that societal model or that paradigm of the accumulation of wealth, of thinking about um, uh, only the ones who are in the top of the pyramid can be self-actualized. So the majority will be in the bottom of the pyramid of this social stratus. And this education model presented here is the one that is in decline. So if we're going to talk about foundations of an emerging vision, um, which is already working and it's already increasingly uh, changing the way we see things. We have to look at the technological advances um, to be able to search for information uh, with the use of a small device that we can carry with us, um, with the ability to connect with others that are across the globe or even outside of the globe in the International Space Station, to be able to listen uh, far away into uh, not only the solar system, but beyond the solar system and be looking at uh, other galaxies has an enabled a change of view, a change of approach to how we are living in this planet. So I wanted to show you uh, a small video for us to um, enjoy. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, 
every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on the moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. The earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Think of the endless cruelties visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings. How eager they are to kill one another. How fervent their hatreds. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe, are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. So that's Carl Sagan. I'm sorry. Let's go again. All right. So what is changing in today's today's world. What we've seen is that we've gained uh, conscience. We've gained conscience over the issues that affect us. Um, there's movement, there is mobilization, there is a lot of information and people raising awareness of issues that go beyond or are very close to us in, in many different ways. Um, young generations are holding us accountable, the older generations, of um, the responsibility for making something to change uh, what needs to be changed. Um, so we're seeing the emergence of a new approach to life. Um, and um, to do that, we need to also approach education consequently. So um, yes, we're being held accountable by our young generations with so many requests, but mainly the one, to, um, the one that unifies us in, in, in something worthwhile. And one of the things that will hold us um, in our best regard um, is education. It is um, the most important aspect that we've generated. Um, there's so much to do with education and um, it's the first one that will make an effect in, in our lives. 
human beings are three-dimensional or we have a 3D existence. Uh, not only do we have a body, we have a mind and a soul. And those um, are acting uh, in unison and our experience depends on um, all of the three experiences of life. And what have we discovered about how our bodies, how our minds and how our souls work is what is helping us to um, come out of um, the parts that we don't like that much or that are affecting us the worst. Um, some of the things that we've discovered is that we are not uh, outside of nature. We are part of the universe in much more ways, many more ways that we can think of. We are natural beings and we are part of this um, solar system and universe and we're made up of all the elements that are existent anywhere we look at. Um, so we're discovering and we're going back to understanding our deep connection with nature. Um, our development as species has allowed us to come to understand what separates us from other species in our uh, neighboring environments. Um, and not necessarily to um, put ourselves on top of uh, the entire uh, line of, of, of beings in the planet, um, but we're understanding that there are more similarities in our development, not only uh, with our survival skills and emotional skills, but also in an organizational skills. Um, investigations about the behavior of bees is one example. How they're highly um, organized as a, a societal uh, structure. Um, also uh, investigations about the behavior of bacteria and how uh, it seems like bacteria also has um, many more capabilities than originally thought. Um, still, we're uh, the only species that has uh, a language that allows us to have this higher order thinking, or at least that's what we think, uh, or what we have evidence of for the time being. Um, but this is what is allowing us to come through. Um, there are 86 billion brain cells, approximately, that are connecting themselves each one of them connecting themselves with 7,000 others, which means that approximately 602 trillion connections in our bodies. And we're coming to understanding, to the understanding that we're part of a species and that even though we can act as drops in the ocean, we are part of the ocean. And in that sense, we find connections with others. And it's not mediated necessarily through space because now we have this way to connect each other um, and time. We, um, our connection with our uh, grandparents or elders and elders uh, in the community um, can be done in many different ways uh, through the information that we have available and through um, the uh, verbal uh, heritage that we have in our communities. So what are those, how are those significant in our, uh, in this new approach uh, that it brings us into connecting with one another and understanding what can be done together. So if we're talking about a, an education or a model of education on a human scale, we can base this on uh, these events, this techno these technological um, advancements that we have at hand and also this motivation uh, to basically survive in this planet. 
um, we as human beings develop in a very natural way. Unlike the pyramid, which is a very artificial structure, um, our societies uh, have developed in a very natural way um, from that um, idea of getting together with good ideas um, and that approach of getting together with good ideas in order to produce new um, developments. Think about, um, if we go back to my first slide, the development of the um, more uh, transcendent paradigm with the emergence of the Western religion. Uh, it was a small group of people that got together and shared a message and they spread. And this small group of people enabled um, a huge, huge uh, religion. Uh, think of the Renaissance with the artists and the movement in Florence and other parts in Europe uh, that uh, were a small group of people that created uh, an entire movement that is being studied as we speak in many universities across the globe. Um, so it's small groups of people like seeds uh, that get together and they start figuring out how to overcome um, the lack of creativity. And through that creative process, generating new ideas that will help others um, keep on uh, the development of our species and expand our knowledge, expand our potency and become fruitful like, um, like a tree. And this is what's happening, that um, newer generations, younger generations are becoming very powerful seed, uh, seedlings, very powerful uh, beings with a lot of knowledge that um, if we miss the mark on respecting that and understanding uh, that many of the newer generations bring much more to our classrooms than we thought, um, we can uh, miss the mark. Um, how can we obtain a, a new approach with a more effective and more sustainable model? Synergy uh, is um, a theory or actually a force in the physical um, sciences. It, it talks about um, that the sum of forces is not a result of the forces just added up. There is a, uh, an increase of that potential in that force. Um, the energy generated by um, every individual force produces a much more, uh, uh, a stronger uh, energetic expression. We have fundamental needs that um, if met in a synergetic manner, will allow us to obtain um, a good life. And we have all of these needs and maybe more, but some, uh, at least the ones that I have uh, been consulting for this presentation, um, have placed them as nine different. And, um, not having them fulfilled or met uh, can be understood as the origin of all of our pathologies, whether they're individual and uh, in, in the expression of our stress and other ailments, uh, or as a, so uh, a society. Um, and uh, there is no need that is more important than other, really. They're all at the same level. Um, and um, the fulfillment of them uh, allows us to really get to um, increasing our um, happiness, our overall happiness. Well, and it, that's what it entails, the fulfillment of all human needs.
those human needs can be fulfilled or are to be fulfilled um, in all dimensions of living. Uh, our principles, our values, our way of seeing the world is going to allow us to um, uh, live those needs and, and fulfill those needs throughout our dimensions. Um, we belong, and that is a very important part of our life. We belong to groups, we belong to a country, to an ideal, to an organization. And our work uh, allows us to um, reflect our potency and, and, and actually produce. Uh, and that all of that and, ha and, and having everything at hand that we need, uh, our, our most basic needs, uh, will help us to transcend. And it's all related and, and it's really a cycle that helps us move um, all together. Jose, let me yeah. interrupt you because we don't see the presentation anymore after the video. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, don't worry. <laughs> because I'm, I'm looking at you seeing this your screen but we don't we see you but it's fine but if you want to share again it will be great can you see it now yes perfect thank you i'm sorry i haven't um well i guess we went over all of this <laughs> um, Don't worry, because you will be forwarding us the presentation. So it's right. Fine. All right. <laughs> well, so this is the last one that I was uh, talking about. Um, in summary, educating. Uh, I don't know if someone would like to to read this for me. Um, I've been talking a lot. If, if someone can, can help me recite this last uh, slide, I would appreciate it. Okay. It would be nice some of the students that could unmute their mic. I can read it. Alexandra? Yes. Okay, go ahead. To educate is to accompany, to open the doors to new worlds, to amaze, to love and cherish the rainbows and the contrast between light and dark, to share dreams, fears, and challenges, walking side by side, not becoming the shadow, free of judgment, free of levies, levies. To educate is to trust, to love, to give, and to receive, transcending. Thank you, Alexandra. So that's the challenge we have ahead of us um, of um, continuing uh, what has been uh, what we have created in, in a sort of dialectic movement. We have come from uh, developing a new wave in which we are transcending our reality of being these natural beings, explaining the movement of the stars and the movement of things with, in a very magical way, going to another wave where we're focused on the development of the soul. And then once that wave comes down, another wave uh, with, the, with scientific knowledge and now we're coming to this time when all of the, the previous paradigms come and uh, are present at the same time. We have this reemergence of the need of connecting with nature and the need of protecting uh, our natural environments. And we also have the, the trust in our scientific approaches to understanding how things change and how our planet is moving across the universe. And um, also going deeper into our most fundamental needs and being able to be congruent with that. Congruent in providing uh, more access uh, to, to all. Um, 
that is the approach that I've uh, come to um, understand with uh, a group of people that I've been uh, working with these ideas for a long time. Um, uh, Dr. Jennifer Weissenberg um, is um, one of the uh, collaborators in this idea of um, a development of an educational model uh, that responds to our most fundamental needs from the perspective of um, economic uh, stability and uh, an economic approach that um, fulfills rather than uh, accumulates wealth. Um, she's not the only one, of course, she's just a collaborator, but um, you'll have these, I'm gonna have to change uh, these um, uh, re references uh, as they are so that you can have uh, the URLs if you would like to, to consult them. Unfortunately, I cannot have a URL for the presentations listed below, uh, but um, uh, well, you'll get to some of those understandings with these few, um, few recent references. So uh, perhaps now, if anyone has questions. Thank you, thank you, Jose. That has been very enlightening and very relaxed in this, you know, a lot of information that we are receiving and bad news with a combination of few, a few good news. Uh, and, and definitely think about this have, have been very, very nice. I know uh, because I'm watching the comments on the chat that students have, you know, participants have enjoying it too, but this is time to make questions. Uh, if you have any doubt, any comment that you may want to ask to Jose, uh, this is the time. You can either use the chat. If you uh, prefer to do it in Spanish, we can translate it for you in the chat. Or if you can activate your microphone since Jose is bilingual, so you can make the question in Spanish if you feel, feel more comfortable in your, if, if Spanish is your first language or if not, uh, uh, any language, and then we can translate uh, for you. But uh, please, please feel free if someone have any a question, any doubt. Alexandra have, have a comment that she studies psychology. So for me, this was a very interesting presentation. So thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. Since you are mute, uh, what, what a specific uh, a information that Jose share was the most interested for you. So you can share with us if you want, Alexandra, to hear your very, very beautiful voice again. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I found interesting his point of view about education and about the Maslow's Pyramid, because I used to, I took that class and I talked about it last semester. So to see another point of view was really interesting to me and very eye-opening like the other um, students said. Thanks, Jose. Yes, Alexandra, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I came across uh, Maslow's pyramid a long time ago when I was studying psychology as well. And um, it's very, um, it's hard to understand because uh, it, it looks very simple. It's a pyramid uh, and divided in, in sort of, mm -hmm. we have an ice cream in Ecuador that is very similar to it. They, it's a fruit ice cream and it's made in a cup and it has different layers of different juices of fruits. And it always reminds me of that, but it's not as tasty or sweet really. Huh? Okay, get the scene. Elisa, you are on mute. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no, I was, I was going to say that Naomi has a raised hand. Ah, okay. Naomi, do, do you want to unmute your microphone? Yes. Go ahead. Hi, me escuchan? Sí. Hi. So, 
I, I also found the presentation very interesting. Um, I study social work, so I have taken like a few uh, classes that touch maybe a little bit um, some of the topics or subjects. And I just wanted, I just, I just uh, found very interesting the part about uh, this new emerging vision that's actually based on synergy, which is something that I've heard of, but not on such a deep um, level. And today we talked about that a little bit more and it was uh, pretty good for me. I was just gonna ask um, about this synergy are we able to actually um, see this in different aspects, not just education, but maybe um, on a professional aspect, maybe um, some kind of social aspects too, because I think that maybe we can. And if so, how can we um, actually uh, aim for this on a practical way that we can like, um, what, what do we have to do to actually make it happen in those different aspects? If you can answer that, I know that is kind of a, a hard or, or deep question, so yeah. Thank you, Naomi. That's a tough one. <laughs> Important question. Um, as a colleague of yours in social work, I'm a psychologist, but social work is in the same area. Um, I think listening is the first step. Um, the idea of compassion being one of the uh, central points of uh, any um, human interaction that will lead to finding um, a path together, uh, I think responds to that. When I, when I hear compassionately, when I listen to somebody with compassion, I'm not only trying to understand that person, I'm uh, trying to find a common ground. And I think that that would be something that is already being done with the mindfulness approach. I think uh, after mindfulness approaches that are being, uh, that you can find them everywhere, we'll soon go to the heart. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Naomi, for your question, and also Jose for trying to answer yeah. this tough, tough one. I think, Lourdes, do you want to share something that I see that you unmute? I unmute. Any, any other question? This has been nice because the group is not that big, so we can have this intimate uh, 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 conversation. Uh, Juan, Juan, do you want to unmute your microphone so you can do your question or you want us to read it? Yeah, sure, I can unmute. Of course, thank you, Juan. Go You're ahead. You're welcome. It's just that, that ocean line you said earlier about how we can make waves in said ocean, but at the same time, we're part of that ocean. I just felt that that was such a deep quote. I wanted, I wanted to ask you if I can quote you on that because I feel like I'm gonna carry that with me for the rest of my life. And I just wanna <laughs> say, no, Mr. Mino said that and I learned so much from it. So it would be nice to see if I can quote you on that. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Juan. I feel that um, I would be uh, not the one to quote because <laughs> I feel that I'm just like summarizing what I've learned, but feel free, feel free to mention me if you'd like, although if it comes from you, it has the same value. Oh, wow. That sounds so great. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Well, I have uh, curiosity, which, uh, from which institution are you, if you want to share? I'm from University of Ana Jiménez in Barcelona. Yeah, very good. Your English is very, very good. And Naomi, Thank you. How, from which institution are you, Naomi? I am from Ana Jiménez also, um, El Recinto de Carolina. 
Very well. And Alexandra, what about you? I'm with Naomi, also from Ana Jimenez, the Carolina campus. Very nice. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for your questions and your comments. Any other question? This is the time. So we can uh, continue talking with Jose in this deep uh, topic, <laughs> but very powerful and very definitely interesting. This is, uh, Jose, let me tell you that this is a totally different approach of all the topics that we have done before. If you have been with us in, since we started the, the quarantine here in Puerto Rico from March, we started webinars and we were focused, focused more on the, how to promote the services that we have uh, to, that are very aligned to uh, make students uh, achieve their academic goals with uh, different resources that we provide and complement the resources that we have in, in, in your institutions. But definitely this topic, when you share with me the topic, I, I, although I didn't have a full understanding of what you were be talking about, I, that really, the description really was very interested for me. And although it doesn't have nothing to do with technology, that is our focus on how to use the new technologies and all of this is, is very important as well. And, and definitely we, we are so happy to have you and also that the students can appreciate this kind, kind this type of approach for us have been Bella because everything that we do, we are doing it thinking on students. So we are very grateful uh, that that you uh, decide to share with us your expertise in this topic that definitely is a very tough one and 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 and, 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 and the way you share it very simple that everybody can understand have been very very valuable valuable for us so thank you so much if someone else have a doubt a question that may want to share or our People, Jalixa or Karen from our staff. They're fine. Okay, then, pues, Jose, thank you so much. Anything mm. else that you may want to add to conclude your topic today? Thank you, Yubelkis. Very, very nice. I really appreciate your kind words, and I'm glad that um, it has resonated. I'm I'm really happy that I was able to keep track of time and that I didn't go over the time that I had planned for. I, I think uh, that has been a win for me. Um, and um, well, the quest, that's the question. What are we going to do with all the technology that we have? And, and I think that the question is very, very valuable um, and, and it has to be in our in our minds when thinking about education. I am really happy that uh, I was able to have this experience with all of you today. It has increased my um, knowledge, my ability uh, to present and use this uh, media as a Zoom, uh, pro uh, the program of Zoom to um, have an impact. And um, that is priceless for me. And. Um, I am so grateful to all of you for this opportunity. Thank you. No, thank you. And Shakira is asking if we're gonna share the recording. Yes, we're gonna share in the same page you register in our uh, events, in our services. You will find the link to the websites for students. Uh, so there you will see the next uh, webinars that we will be offering during this semester. And also at the bottom, you will see the repository and the links to all the recordings of the past webinars we have done. So if you haven't had the opportunity to see a, the past uh, previous webinars, you have the opportunity to click on the links and, and, and see. Those are one hour webinars, not that much time, but very nice and well done like the Jose, the topic that Jose did today. And, and also, Jose will be sharing with us the presentation since we didn't have the opportunity to, to see it, uh, everything, but uh, you, will, you can download the presentation in, in a PDF format as well. 
And remember that if you are interested in receiving a certificate of participation, because uh, we know that this webinar for students are important in order to uh, uh, keep tracking of the topics they have been learning from, uh, please uh, feel free to send us an email to info at heads.org uh, and please send you send us your full name uh, the date of the webinar and the title oh, with the date is more than enough but if you want to add the title will be great so we don't miss up uh, which separate certificate you're asking for and please uh, also you can reply the email that Jalixa sent you this morning with the link you can also reply and ask for the certificate right there because now we know that you are talking about this specific webinar okay uh, thank you again to everyone. We hope that we will have you in a future uh, uh, opportunity, maybe next semester, Jose, because definitely this topic is very important and pertinent specifically right now while we are, Bella, experience uh, right now is something that was uh, out of the sudden and have changed our life and uh, forever. And definitely this kind of of thinking and how to see things differently help us uh, to overcome all the obstacles that these have been, you know, uh, putting in our mind and in our, our, you know, uh, all the difficulties that students I know are, are, are going through. So please feel free to uh, uh, contact us at info at heads.org. Uh, if you have any question, any other topic you may want to hear from, uh, let us know because we are planning for next semester uh, right now. Thank you, Jose. Say hi to your president, Dr. Carlos Vargas, who is one of our best uh, president supportive uh, board members, and also to Pan, uh, Pan Vargas, who is our chief editor of the Hesolan Journal and very valuable, valuable collaborator. Thank you to all. Uh, stay safe and remember to follow up in social media. Also, you, we will share the link to the recording on social media too. You can follow up in LinkedIn or in LinkedIn or in Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, any other so, or the social media you, that you may prefer. And thank you again for your time and your a, 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 a active participation on the chat and also during the webinar. Have a good day to everyone and to the next one. Take care.